Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Creepypasta, this is a series where we take a look at your favorite online campfire tales. In today's episode, we're talking about something called Autopilot. Now, what could this Creepypasta be all about? Well, I'll let you know right now, it's not about planes or anything. It's more about the innate mental condition that almost all of us really have to an extent. The rut that we all live in. What could be so creepy about an autopilot? Well, sit back, relax, and find out. Have you ever forgotten your phone? When you did realize it, I'm guessing you didn't just smack your forehead and explain, Damn! Apropos of nothing. The realization probably didn't dawn on you spontaneously. Most likely, you reached for your phone, pawing open your pocket or handbag, and were momentarily confused by it not even being there. Then, you did a mental recap of the morning events. Shit. In my case, my phone's alarm woke me up as normal, but I realized the battery was lower than I expected. It was a new phone and it had this annoying habit of leaving applications running that drained the battery overnight, so I put it on the charge while I showered instead of into my bag like normal. It was a momentary slip from the routine, but that was all it took. Once in the shower, my brain got back into the routine it follows every morning and that was it. Forgotten. This wasn't just me being clumsy. As I later researched, this is a recognized brain function. Your brain doesn't work just on one level, it works on many. Like when you're walking somewhere, you think about your destination and avoiding hazards, but you don't think about keeping your legs moving properly. If you did, the entire world would turn into one massive hilarious quap cosplay. I wasn't thinking about regulating my breathing. I was thinking whether I should grab a coffee or the drive to work, and I did. I wasn't thinking about moving my breakfast through my intestines, right? I was wondering when I'd finish on time to pick up my daughter Emily from the nursery after work or get stuck with another late fee. That is the thing. There's a level in your brain that just deals with routine, so that the rest of the brain can think about other things. I, I mean, think about it here. Think about your last commute. What do, you ex what do you exactly remember? Probably little, right, if anything. Most common journeys blur into just one, and recalling anyone in particular is scientifically proven to be difficult. Do something often long enough, and it becomes routine. Keep doing it, and it stops being processed by the thinking bit of the brain, and gets relegated to a part of the brain dedicated to dealing with routine. Your brain just keeps doing it, without you even thinking about it. Soon you think your routine to work as much as you do keeping your legs moving when you walk. Most people call it autopilot, but there's a danger there. If you have a break in your routine, your ability to remember and account for the break is only as good as your ability to stop your brain going into routine mode. My ability to remember my phone being on the counter is only as reliable as my ability to stop my brain entering morning routine mode, which would dictate that my phone is actually in my bag. But it didn't stop my brain entering routine mode. I got in the shower as normal, routine started, exception forgotten. Autopilot engaged. My brain was back in the routine. I showered, I shaved, the radio forecasted amazing weather, I gave Emily her breakfast, loaded her into the car. She was adorable that morning, she complained about the bad sun in the morning blinding her, saying it stopped her from having a little sleep on the way to the nursery. But regardless, we left. And that was the routine. It didn't matter that my phone was on the counter, charging silently, my brain was in the routine, and in the routine my phone was in my bag. That is why I forgot my phone. Not clumsiness, not even negligence. Nothing more than my brain entering routine mode and overriding that exception that occurred. Autopilot engaged. I left for work. It's a swelteringly hot day already. The bad sun had been burning since about my traitorously absent phone had woken me up. The steering wheel was burning hot to the touch when I sat down. I think I heard Emily shift over beside my driver's seat and get out of the glare. But I got to work, submitted the report, attended the morning meeting. It's not until I took a quick coffee break and reached for my phone that the illusion shattered. I did a mental restep. I remembered the dying battery. I remember putting it on charge. I remembered leaving it there. My phone was on the counter. Autopilot disengaged. Again, there lies a danger. Until you have that moment, the moment you reach for your phone and shatter the illusion, that part of your brain is still in routine mode. It has no reason to question the facts of the routine. That's why it's a routine, the act of repetition. It's not as if anyone could say, why don't you remember your phone? Didn't it occur to you? How could you forget? You must be negligent. This is to miss the point. My brain was telling me the routine was completed as normal, despite the fact that it wasn't. 
It wasn't that I forgot my phone according to my brain, according to my routine, my phone was in my bag. Why would I think to question it? Why would I check? Why would I suddenly remember out of nowhere that my phone was on the counter? My brain is so wired into this routine and the routine was that my phone was in my bag. The day continued to bake. The morning haze gave way to the relentless fever heat of the afternoon. Tarmac bubbled. The direct beams of heat threatened to crack the pavement. People swapped coffees for ice smoothies. Jackets discarded, sleeves rolled up, ties loosened, bros mopped, the park slowly filled with sunbathers and barbecues. The window flames threatened to wrap. The thermometer continued to swell. Thank fuck the offices were air-conditioned. But as ever, the furnace of the day gave way to a cooler evening. Another day, another dollar. Still cursing myself for forgetting my phone, I drove home. The day's heat had baked the inside of the car, releasing this horrible smell from somewhere. Hmm. When I arrived on the driveway, the stone crunching comfortably under my tires. My wife greeted me at the door. Where's Emily? Fuck! As if the phone wasn't bad enough after everything I'd left Emily at the fucking nursery? I immediately sped back to the nursery. I got to the door and started practicing my excuses, vainly vainly wondering if I could charm my way out of a late fee. I saw a piece of paper stuck to the door. Due to the vandalism overnight, please use side door today only. Overnight? What? The door was fine this mor- I froze. My knees had shook. Vandals? A change in the routine? My phone was on the counter. I hadn't been here this morning. My phone was on the counter. I'd driven past because I was drinking my coffee. I didn't drop off my Emily. My phone was on the counter. She moved her seat and I didn't see her in my the mirror. My phone was on the counter. She'd fallen asleep out of the bad sun. She didn't speak when I drove past her nursery. My phone was on the counter. She changed the routine. My phone was changed on the counter. She changed the routine and I'd forgotten to drop her off. My phone was on the counter. Nine hours. That car, the baking sun, nowhere, water power to help that... Steering wheel too hot to touch. That smell? I walked to the car door, numb and shocked. I opened the door. My phone was on the counter. And my daughter was also dead. Autopilot disengaged. Wow! For the first time in a while, I found a really good mindfuck creepypasta. Anyone remember those since the Zorax days? This one has a morbid ending, and for that I'm glad it's fiction, but the concept behind it is shockingly close to how some would act in this situation. What I mean is that we've all heard of a rut, am I correct? We all have some form of a routine. Now I assume a lot of us have a phone, wallet, or something of equal importance that we use on a daily basis. It's happened when I've driven to a grocery store and I forgot my wallet, and it doesn't happen a lot because I automatically, you know, grab my wallet, you know, without thinking really in my head. So it's that subconscious part of the head that just does things, right? I reach into my pocket and when I don't feel my wallet or anything else, I snap out of whatever state I'm in and my eyes widen and I start frantically checking my pocket or any close by compartment of mine. It's something I think we can all agree with. It's autopilot. And as unique as some of our lives may be, with how much diversification we may have, we all have an autopilot to a certain degree. We've all done something out of a rut, but probably went back into our autopilots. What makes this creepypasta creepy? necessarily is the fact that it's so eerily close to something in our lives and behavior. Now, not necessarily this case, but its concept in general. The fact that, you know, you can really understand how someone thinks also adds to that creepiness as well when you get to this panic state at the end. And if we look at the panic state, you know, more importantly, how it acts is that, again, like I said, when I reach into my wallet or something, you know, you do reach this panic state. You do get into a, you know, position where you start to think what happened. Like, it's just something that happens to you that is so jarring. And it's weird to, you know, talk about, but it is real. It happens. And I'm pretty sure a majority of people that are watching this video may have been in that state at one point. Now, the messed up part is, is that, again, like I said, it can happen to anyone. No one is ex exempt from this. That's why this concept works in its creepiness. That's why, that's why it, it's as hard-hitting as it is. No matter how shocking this creepypasta may be, this paradigm, this model, you know, this, uh, this rut ideology is universal. The story is great build-up, written well, and the concept was shocking again in one of the best ways, and honestly I think this is the best mindfuck creepypasta to me so far. An ending I didn't expect, but it did leave my eyes wide open. 
In the end, I do ask, uh, what do you think about this, and what would you change from this creepypasta, and what would you rate this? Let me know in the comments below. This has been another episode of Creepypastas, and if you like what you saw, then please like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and... Where's my phone? Thank you.